Hi and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll show you how you can set up the FIGAP tool to monitor your SAP cloud integration system. First off, you need to go click here, sign up, enter your name and email address, or get into the trial, and sign up for our privacy policy. You will then get an email in a few minutes for you to start this. Now we will get an email with this license key. Next up is we need to set up the tool. And to do that, we want to install it in GitHub or in SAP Cloud Foundry. Here we can use this uh, Cloud Foundry, to download that and install. Uh, then next thing is <coughs> we need to download this zip archive. And we get it here. In our transfers, we can then unzip this to our folder and go into this folder. In this folder, we need to make a small change in this vase here. We edit this. We need to put in our company name or whatever info we need to for this. So we use a monitoring demo a version of the tool. And you get that version from out here. In the Docker here, and you need to select the one that's called BTP. So this one would be the one you want to put in here, version of the tool. And that is all we need to do. Then we press save. We open a command prompt in here, go into a command prompt here, cd, cd. And now we are in this folder with all this artifact. Next up is we go back here to our CPI trial tenant. And here we can see it is, or, and this can obviously also be your productive environment. We have here the URL we need to be using. So you will need here to go back to this one and use this CF login. And it will then ask you for this endpoint you log in with your username email pause so now i've logged in next up is we need to unzip this go to the folder we can create this command here this will take a little while to execute and create the database so now it is creating a database uh, for us in cloud foundry um then we can go here and create the security artifacts this will allow us to assign users in the sap applications to this system and that means we can go to our cpi system now or the, the tenant here we can now see we got a number of roles Here we get the figaf roles that has been added. So I need to go to my user here. Here's my user. I then select this and assign this uh, ERT admin or some of the other users uh, that we would need for this uh, monitoring room. But this would be the way you would define users and what they need to have access to in your CPI system or in the figaf system. So here we can go to the trial we can go to our instances and we can now see it uh, it should be creating the database and it takes five ten minutes uh, to create it so let me just pause so now the database has been created and this can take yeah ten minutes for it to do the next thing we want to do is we just want to check the manifest and if we open that one we can here we can see here it uses this 
uh, link here. Um, and then if you're just using an on trial, you can uh, lower this volume to less than two gigabytes. Um, and that should be it. Um, so now we have that this set up and we will then go here. So this use this cf push command and we'll hope that it all works. And so now it will start creating the two apps for this. So first the, the, the app, and then the, the second one would be the, uh, the router that is being created. And it takes a little while for it to create here. And if we go to our Cloud Foundry, we can now see in the dev space here, we have two applications running. One is the app and the other one is the router. And this one is the one that has all the app information into it. We could look at this log page here and we can see that it, it starts up. And normally this will take like a minute for it to start up. So we can see all the different things that it's trying to set up. Data migration, P2P mode on. And now it is started. So we could go back here to our dev space, select this router, and here we have the URL for the pickup tool. So we copy this slash IRT. And now we can then we'll be redirected to login because we have added our user role, we are now logged in. And we just say login with SSO. And next is we go to our license page. And here we find the license page that was created. So it took like 13 minutes since we created the license and installed the tool. And now we are up and running. So next up is we want to connect to our CPI system. And the way we do that is we go here to agents, we connect and we say this is uh, NPS, this is Cloud Foundry, the, this is our user. And we will need the password from this. We would need the CPI URL, this is this one, without the host name and path. We will need this FLM map host name. And the way we can find that is to go here and take this value here. It is Cloud Foundry and we would need the uh, Client ID and client secret. For now, we will just use blanks, but you can obviously easily find these things. We will enable monitoring because we want to set up monitoring this. And now we can press save. And if we then press test, it will not be able to test the connectivity uh, because that's not a part of uh, the process. So now we can see that you would only test the testing once you run test case on it. So now we can go to our support tool. We can create a consumer. It is on this agent. We will create it. We'll just call it arrow. Test condition. It's using the default uh, OData query. So we just say save. We will enable the, the job to run. So that means every five minutes it will pull for errors. And we can see we got a default rule here on what to do if nothing else happens. And we, under the alerts here, can say pull messages. And this will then look back in time and find all the different alerts that have been processed during this this time. So we got some 75 messages that will be processed. Let's see. 
we need to go back in time. So it will fetch the oldest one first and then it will find newer ones. So now we can see we've got a number of different alerts that are coming out of this uh, great failure iFlow. And the idea is we can then go into the tool here. We can say what we want to do with this specific alert. And if we want to do something with it, we can create, click here and create a new rule that then is no consumer available endpoint. And we can put in a ordering of these items and we can then miss something if you want you can also set up email notification that would require you to set up emails uh, also in the application setting here you can set up an smtp server we can specify we do not want the same notification multiple times etc we can test to see if it works so this would be the email we would receive and then we can press save so now we have actually created a rule. That means next time this iFlow will run and pr produce this error, the, it will get into this, this bucket. So if we find one of the other alerts that is, there is one here that's an invalid XPath. We can add here. That's maybe number 30. And... Uh, it says that we are not getting this uh, correct X path we can test if it works and here we do have some problems with uh, too many line expressions so we just need to update it to make sure it works and now we have created a different rule for this setup so each time we will be increasing this, we will be able to find new and better rules for the different notifications that we have. We can also set that this is something we do not want to uh, deal with. And that means if we go back to our monitoring hero, we can then increase these rules as we get along uh, setting up more and more complex uh, rules for it. In here, we also have an option to create a uh, other consumers like if sender or receiver equals lock then we want to fetch these payloads another option we have is the in the monitoring here here you can create a filter we can select which messages we want we can specify which iflows it should have if we need specific iflows and we can press save and then this iFlow would then give all the different iFlows that has been triggered, how they're performing. We can see if there's any payloads that, that comes from this. So here we can see the different uh, payloads and you can give access to specific people to this kind of context. We also have a system monitoring that can give you an idea about how the system is performing, how many messages it's processing. And to enable that, you simply go here into that and you set, uh, that should be it, uh, enable heat mask. But it would only process during certain period of time. Um, so you just need to wait uh, until it has processed and once it's done and you have selected enough data you would see something like like this about how it performs if you have new you have cpu and memory usage if it's cloud foundry you just have iflow monitoring status and messages processed um, so this gives you a better idea about how to manage these iflows how you can send notifications to users about what is going on and if you want for some reason to persist specific messages you also have an option here 
where you can go in and you can say which uh, iFlow we want uh, to download. To do that, we would need to have all of the iFlows in the FIGAF tool. And to do that, we need to select tracked objects. Then we'll, this will download all the artifacts that we have into the FIGAF tool. And here you would have a way to do versioning, handling all of these different alerts in a simple way. I hope you find this interesting and something you want to see out in, in practice and you can see will help you manage your SAP integration a lot easier. So uh, sign up and see how well it is uh, to work with. Thank you. So now all messages have, all iFlow has been downloaded to the tool. If anything changes here, you'd easily be able to go in, synchronize and get the latest version of that iFlow, be able to compare version versions etc. Now we go to EDI message monitoring. Here you can go in and select an iFlow. Um, so we have one here that we want to assist the great failure iFlow. We can select it. We can select which type of messages we want for this and schedule it. And once we go here we can then pull. Ah, it's out here. We have a pull messages that would allow us to fetch all of these different messages. You also have an option to do that on the agent setting. Here you have and uh, enable mm, monitored message polling, specify a current expression each whatever minute. And now all the, the messages that you would receive would be available in here. So the idea is you can go here and you can then view the different artifacts that exist for a given one. And obviously this will take a little time for for processing and fetching all the, the relevant data that exists. So here we now have this adapter, so MPL persistent messages. These kind of things would then be available from in here and you can easily search and find the relevant data. So a simple way of, of looking at data that is persisted and you can obviously define how long time do we want globally or for a specific iFlow, how many days do we want to persist a given message. So this gives you some more ability to handle uh, the processing of these things.